Oh no, so he's, he's gonna make like his own galaxy. Oh my oh, god. No. What's going on YouTube and what up to the Dragon Squad? I am Ember, the Blaze, and I'm Glacier, the Iceborn. And we are Reaction Dragons, coming to you from the Dragon Slayer. And a quick reminder guys, if you like the vibe, like and subscribe. Doesn't cost a dime, and helps us go full time. Why are you making it complicated? It's easy. Thanks so much for the support guys, and what's on the menu for today Glacier? We're back at you with some more Love, Death, and Robots. This episode's called Zima Blue. Zima Blue, and the um, thing I love about the show is I have no idea what to expect, so keep the intros real short, but uh, this one I really have no idea what it could be about. It doesn't really give me any clues, but I'm sure it's gonna have some kind of sci-fi element. Maybe it'll have some love, death, or robots in it. That's all I care about, yeah. but I'm ready to get the fuck in this glacier. You ready? Yeah, I like it. It has uh, Zima Blue, because I'm representing blue, so yeah, right. Well, just like usual, guys, just take a couple seconds, hit the like button down below. The impressions do lead to more views, and with that being said, let's fucking go. Oh, that's blue, all right. <laughs> yep. I'd heard Zima announce the unveiling of his final work of art. I'd asked many times for interviews and was always rejected. Now, for whatever reason, Zima Blue had requested to speak with me. Oh, so he's like an artist? Yes. Zima Blue. It was a precise thing. Little is known about Zima's history. It was said that he started his art career in portraiture. Dang, it's pretty spot on. The human form was too small a subject. Search for deeper meaning in space. forced him to look further. That's how the mural work started. Oh uh, shit, yeah, badass. Reliably brilliant. That thing will sell for like a billion dollars. Over the next several decades, the abstract shapes changed and became more dominant. Oh shit, they got bigger and bigger. It was Zima Blue. They nearly made his own color. Our Zima could take things. They couldn't have been more wrong. Oh shit! Damn. Look how big that canvas is. Truly huge murals. Oh my wow. god! Goes up to space. But Zima was just getting started. Oh no! He's, He's gonna make like his own galaxy. Oh my oh, god! No. I'm gonna paint the asteroids blue. It was a certain level of spectacle that made Zima truly famous. Wow! They're in space. Damn. You have to go out to space just to see it, and it's so glory. Glad you could make it, Claire. How was the flight? Oh shit, he's a robot. Oh shit, he's like, I'm a robot now. Some people find me intimidating, but they quickly get over it. It's like a nanotech suit or something. It's been over 100 years since I've spoken to the press. Damn. He's like immortal now? There was a planet called Kharkov 8. It specialized in illicit cybernetic modifications, Damn. radical biological procedures. Damn. Tolerate extreme Damn, environments like Avatar. without yep. the burden of a protective suit. Oh, so you can just go to space? His eyes could see in any known spectrum. Oh, shit. He no longer breathed oxygen, and so he ventured forth. To That's about it. Damn, I can just go through any planet I want, any temperature I want. But what Locked Zima magma. eventually realized, already speaking its own truth, yeah. far, far better than he ever could. This shit is crazy. Pretty much like you can live forever. Search for truth has led me here. And what does the swimming pool have to do with that? It belonged to a talented young woman with a keen interest in practical robotics. Like a love interest? Especially fond of the one she'd created to clean her swimming pool. Mm. But the young woman wasn't satisfied with the job it did. A brain large enough to process the visual oh, data yeah. into a model of its surroundings it gave it the ability to make its own decisions. Wow. A supercomputer yeah. pool cleaner. And by stages, it became yeah. more aware. Yeah. Did they go cyberdyne on her? The woman died. The little machine was passed from one owner. Well, the machine is actually static. Added things. Made modifications here. Damn, I'm just a full on house cleaner. With every iteration, it became more alive. More me. Oh, what the what? fuck? So he's it's the pool like cleaner. Man with machine parts. Not a machine that thinks it's a man. Sometimes it's difficult even for me to understand what I've become. How's that possible? Of the tiles. Seema Blue, the manufacturer called it. Damn, that's how he got the color. First thing I ever saw. Wait, so he went from the pool cleaning machine to a human? Did he? Back to like a super cybernoid being? I thought he was a human at first. Damn, keep flapping. Hey. And as I do, I will slowly shut down my higher brain functions. Hmm. Like a suicide? Myself. Damn. Deconstruction. 
leaving just enough to appreciate my surroundings. Holy shit. That goes back to his true form. To extract some simple pleasure from the execution of a task well done. Wow. Well, like, go, went full circle. I'm going home. Look how big that pool is. Damn. He's blue. technically still there. I mean, it's the, yeah, he's just at his most primitive form, like the way he was created. Damn. That was crazy as fuck. So was he ever human then? Holy shit. All right, Zima Blue. Glacier, what'd you think? Uh, very unique episode. I liked it. Um, wasn't my favorite out of the Love, Death, and Robots, but it was still pretty cool. I like the interpretation. I mean, I like that it kind of confused me a little bit because I didn't know that he was actually, if he was human or was robot, but I think it was just from who was telling the story at the beginning. Yeah, because it seems like he's been around so long that what Claire is basing her facts on, what she knows about Zima Blue, is all just based on hearsay and like the myth of Zima Blue. Yeah, she's kind of like narrating it. So, yeah, she, so from her perspective, she's thinking that, oh, he was just this great artist and he kept wanting to do things bigger and bigger. And then he had this uh, specific color, Zima Blue. And yeah. first he would put the little square on all of his pieces and they kept getting more bigger and more like centralized. Yeah. And he was making these huge ass murals that are literally like, as big as the planet yeah, itself. Like, painting the blue asteroids. And yeah, sort of painting asteroids like, again on a cosmic level. And then to her point, when she actually got the interview, um, she was under the impression that he was a human. He just went on all these, all, all these like you know technological advances with the body where pretty much it made a skin pretty much a skin indestructible so you could walk through lava and whatever planetary environments yep. he doesn't have to breathe oxygen anymore um so he's able to kind of literally travel the cosmos and get this like world perspective for his uh for his art but it turns out that he was never human to begin with i was thinking that he went from like that pool cleaning machine and then went to like a, a cybernoid human where you have like organic parts and then he went to like a super being where like literally he's just like live forever yeah, go, go, go anywhere, do whatever he wants. But so, but yeah, from once we find out the truth, it seems like he he started off where his maker made him just a, like an automatic pool cleaning robot, and then little by little, he she kept upgrading him, upgrading him to the point he wanted more out of life. And eventually, when she died, he kept just getting passed, passed down. down from person to person. Yeah. And so he wanted to like find his true meaning in life which I guess was to become an artist and create all his art. And his final piece was he recreated this giant swimming pool yep. and he literally like deconstructed his body and just like kind of downgrading himself all the way down to his original form where he was literally just doing the, like enjoying the simple pleasure in life of just cleaning each individual tile. Yeah, I wonder if Claire was a reporter at all or like why, what was this um, significant about her character to where- She got the interview? Yeah, where she got that, you know, she got pretty much all the secrets. Like I'm gonna freaking like she was the one, only one that wasn't in shock when he started Exactly. She knew exactly what he was going to do. Like, cause he's like, this is going to be my final piece. And so I wonder what ties she had if it was family later or if he, she was just one of the random people picked out of the... Maybe she was like a relative to his maker. Yeah. Or, um, or she was just a very well-renowned reporter. I don't know. Reporter, but, yeah. He but yeah. He expected her. And he's like, all right, I'm going to leave this with you. But yeah. The cool thing, I mean, this didn't have any like nudity, like graphic nudity or graphic violence, but the story, you know, it was, it was very short and precise. The animation was great. It reminded me of that one show, Eon Flux. I remember it came out like late night on MTV back in the day. And then they made it like a live action movie with Charlotte Theron, but the way like the animation was kind of reminded me of like a newer version of Eon Flux. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I love the, the use of that blue. I mean, that, that was a great blue. I've never heard of like Zima blue being used on like cars or like wall paints. I don't, I don't know if it's like an actual color that exists or they made it just for the show. Right. But um, yeah, overall, like very you know quick and precise episode, beautifully animated. Final thoughts, Glacier? Yeah, final thoughts. Uh, again, love the animation. Uh, like that, like I said, love the robots series. It's great just because you don't know what to expect. Mm -hmm. um, overall, great episode. Dragon certified. Yep, I'm a big uh, art fanatic, so the whole art aspect of it was really great, especially those crazy cosmic pieces that he was putting together. But um, loved it. Right? Uh, Dragon certified. Fucking hit it. There you have it guys, another one in the books. The real question is, what did you guys think in their dry spell land? Did we miss the point completely about what this episode was about? Or like, was was he human at one point? Or were we kind of on a point where he started out as a pool cleaner, evolved, and then pretty much came full circle and went back to being a pool cleaner? Leave a comment down below, like, subscribe, join the Dragon Squad, and remember, it doesn't matter if you're up to Fire Squad or the Ice Squad, at the end of the day, when you're a dragon, you're a dragon. That's the end of the video, guys. Thanks so much for watching. We are Reaction Dragons. I am Ember. The Blaze. And I'm Glacier. The Iceborn. And until next time, we'll see you next time. time.